on behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to resume with concavity of a function with exponentials. This is the same g of x that we have been dealing with for quite some time now. In part one, talking about concavity of this function, we did find the second derivative, we set it equal to zero, and then we found a value of x where the second derivative is equal to zero. We're going to be using this in this part two of the tutorial. Just in case you haven't seen it, we also have talked about intervals of increasing and decreasing. We talked about the critical values of this exact same function. So we're diving real deep into this function and we're gonna finish things off with concavity. So here's our second derivative. We set it equal to zero in an earlier video and we found when x is equal to four, the second derivative is equal to zero. This is the only value. Now this function and the second derivative and the first derivative, these functions are defined for all values of x. So this is the only spot we have to test for concavity. And ultimately, maybe we have some inflection points. So in earlier videos, we did mention when the second derivative is positive, our function is concave up. And when the second derivative is negative, our function is concave down. If we have a spot where the concavity changes, maybe from concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up, we have an inflection point there. Let's see if we have that in this example. Let's pick a test value to the left of four, such as zero, and let's pick a test value to the right of four, such as five. Any value to the left, I just pick zero. Any value to the right, I just pick five. Let's plug zero into this second derivative. Now you may think you need a calculator for this, but in all honesty, you don't. If you think about this part right here, when you plug zero into x, you're really gonna get e squared because that's gonna be e to the two minus zero. So that's e squared, which is a positive number, times a negative one half. All of this will give us a negative number. So we have a negative number times, what type of number do we get when we plug zero into this? Two minus zero, when you plug zero into it, we get a positive, and therefore a negative times a positive gives us a negative. This implies that our function is concave down to the left of four. Let's check out five now. If we plug five into this, we're still going to get a negative number here. You may notice, well, e to the two minus half of five. Well, half of five is 2.5. Two minus 2.5 is a negative one half. But the thing is, e to any power, whether it be positive or negative, is still gonna be a positive number. Times a negative one half, we have a negative. Times, what do we get when we plug five into here? two minus, remember I said 2.5 earlier, this is gonna be a negative number. So a negative times a negative is gonna be a positive. This implies that our function is concave up to the right of four. So we do have an inflection point when x equals four. Let's go ahead and list our intervals of concavity and then we'll come back and find that actual ordered pair where that inflection point is. And again, we do have an inflection point because our concavity changes from concave down to concave up. So our function is concave down for values of x from negative infinity all the way up to four. That's this interval we have right here, all of this stuff up until four. We do not include four because when x equals four, the second derivative is equal to zero. So we don't wanna include that. And our function is concave up for values of x that are greater than four. That's from four to infinity. These are our intervals of concavity. And again, we concave up because our second derivative was positive from four to infinity. Just make sure you don't include four there. And again, since our concavity changes, we have an inflection point right here. Let's find that inflection point by finding g of four. Don't find g double prime of four. That's going to give you zero. We don't want that. We want the actual ordered pair on this curve. Therefore, to find our inflection point, we'll find g of four. So when we plug four into this function, ironically, we get four, and the reason why we get that is because four times e, this becomes the zero power. e to the zero power is one, because two minus two gives us zero. So we have one times four, we get four. Don't make that assumption that we always get the same y value as our x value, but this is our inflection point. We do have an inflection point at four comma four. And with that said, let's go over to Desmos and see if we can pinpoint this inflection point. 
So here's our curve g of x, and let's plot that point for comma four. And this spot that we have right here, notice the function is concaving down, but right there is where the function starts to concave up. You can see it has that switch, and it happens at exactly this point, four, four. We go from concave down to concave up at this spot here. And there you have it, intervals of concavity for a function that has an exponential in it. This function here, we've dove into it real deep. Make sure you check out all the videos we've looked at for this particular function. Intervals of increasing and decreasing, maximums, minimums, and now we have concavity and inflection points. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.